Blue Bayou, um, US indie film from uh, writer director Justin Chan, who also stars, inspired by the real life experiences of unnaturalized adoptees in the US uh, who are facing deportation despite having lived there all their lives. So, John and Alicia Vikander are Antonio and Kathy LeBlanc. She has a daughter, Jessie, by previous partner, Ace, who is a cop. She is now pregnant with Antonio's child. Jessie's worried that Antonio will love her less than his, in inverted commas, real child, his own child. And he says does everything he can to convince her that that's not the case. He loves her completely. He is her father. He does everything, like including taking her out, on, out of school on a motorbike trip to his favourite spot, which doesn't impress his mother. Ace, however, is jealous and wants visitation rights and has a very vicious cop friend who figures a way that they might be able to get Antonio out of the picture. Um, he gets arrested, and it turns out that his adoptive parents never naturalised him, and now he faces deportation, and the legal options, as his lawyer explains, are negligible. He has two kids. I mean, listen to him, look at him, he's American. It doesn't matter what he looked like. It's immigration policy. I was brought here when I was three. I've been here for over 30 years. Well, sometimes with these international adoptions in the 80s, the the proper paperwork... Yeah, but like, like I said, I've been here for over 30 years. Okay, can't you just tell them that, that, that I, was, I was adopted by white people? I understand your frustration. I really do, but that's not how it works. I hear your options. You can depart voluntarily and have a chance of receiving status or you can stay and appeal. But if you do that and the judge don't rule in your favor, you forfeit any opportunity to return to this country. What does that mean? It means if he fights and loses, he can never come back. So the film feels very authentic, and it's no surprise to discover that a lot of research went into this with adoptees facing a similar predicament. There was a controversy uh, shortly after it was first seen when members of the Korean adopted community said that some of the film had been based on their stories without permission. Um, he released a statement saying that actually he'd worked with 13 people, that it's not about one person. From the onset, I did not want this film to solely reflect one individual's details. Um, whatever you take away from that, I think it is clear that the film strikes a chord with a number of, uh, a number of people. Um, it's also not above melodramatic contrivance. There is a subplot about he's a tattooist and he befriends somebody who it then turns out is facing her own uh, her own demons in, in the form of an illness. And he then becomes friends with another family with whom he sort of seems to find a kindred spirit whilst everything else is falling apart in this other section of his life. And that felt to me like a subplot that didn't particularly need to be in there. Because for most of the time, when you're just with the couple and the daughter watching their lives, it works because you believe completely uh, in the characters. The camera work is all sort of very verite and very you know unintrusive. So you do feel like you're watching an actual domestic life. And the film depicts a story which is kind of almost Kafka-esque that, as he said, I, you know, I was adopted. I've been here all my life. But due to a legal loophole, suddenly he's told he's not. And that's why I'm loving that clip. He says, look at him, look at him, he's American. And the film ends with a series of um, images and text of real life cases of people who have faced this absolutely, you know, absurd and terrifying and tragic situation whereby through this, said, this legal mishap, suddenly their entire lives are turned upside down. And I think what the film does is it it really, you, you start to feel properly anxious. As the situation gets worse and worse, you start to feel properly anxious. It has a finale that had me in floods of tears. And I know that some people think that the finale is overcranked. And there is a thing about, you know, wringing every drip of emotion that you can get from a scene. The, the, that's only a problem if you don't manage to do it. Wringing every drip of emotion from a scene and if you do manage to get it right is very powerful. I had a very strange experience with this film, which was that I found it very moving. And I came out of it and a colleague whose work I admire very much went, <sighs> and it was like when I went to see Brazil with my friend Duncan Cooper and I sat there and watched Brazil and thought it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. 
and we walked out down the stairs and he went, that was rubbish. And you go, did we watch, did we watch the mm-hmm. same film? Because from where I was standing, Blue Bayou had a real emotional sucker punch. I mean, yes, it's, it is over-contrived and it is over melodramatic, although I'm a bit of a sucker for melodrama, which is just odd because of the fact that it has this verite feel to it. But I thought it was I thought it was powerful and I thought it told a story that was important. Well, you said some people have a problem with finales. Finales being No, some people have a problem with this finale. Oh, this finale that, that that it's like all you know, it's like everything is cranked up for the maximum emotional, you know, resonance. And I think some people would have because it because it has a that kind of very taste, slightly stand back feel. Some people would have preferred it to have ended on a I like the fact that it ends on a note that had me in bits. I mean, in bits. I like a film that's got an emotional... I'm a sucker for that stuff. Do we get some Roy Orbison? You get uh, Alicia Vikander singing. And you know what? Along with everything else that she, Alicia Vikander Don't can tell do, me she's a great singer. She's a great singer. Really? It's, it's wow. so annoying. Her accents are perfect. Her performances are great. Yes. And she can sing. I want and to... you've interviewed her, right? Yeah. She's really nice. She's amazing. 